Welcome to High Rise. What we want to do in this game is build extremely tall buildings in the city and earn points. So here's a little two building. Here's a medium seven building. Here's a big 14 building. So every time you build a building, you would come over here to your point tracker. So let's say I built the two building. One, two. Let's say Simon built the seven building. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's say Liz built the big 14 building. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fourteen. And every time you do stuff, you keep going around and around. You always see your points. Well, all right. How do you build buildings? Well, over here we have some blueprints. In the first round, which is 2010, you would need a purple tile or black tile to build this two building. Then over here, you would need a blue tile, pink tile, purple tile, green tile, and this green wild card piece, which I'll explain later. And then you can make a bigger building. And then when you get to the second round, over here, it's a little bit bigger in 2020. You have bigger buildings where the smallest one here is three tiles instead of two. And then this one's one, two, three, four, five tiles plus the green thing instead of four. And then the last round in 2030, you have one, two, three, four tiles for the start. And the biggest one is one, two, three, four, five tiles plus two of these ultra plastic, they're called ultra plastic wild cards. So, how do we get tiles? That's a good question. Well, you take your starting chip, so let's put that there for Simon. Put this here for Nico, and let's put this here for Liz. You take your player piece, you go around the board. So if Liz goes here, she gets this red tile. If Liz had went here, she would get this white tile. If Liz had went here, she would get this ultra plastic, etc., etc. There's more space over here: black, purple, blue. Now, let's see. What I really like about this game, let's get into that first, is the turn order mechanics. So, you can only, the only spaces you can go are on the edges of the board. So these three over here. Once you go to this side, every time you pass this, these are uh, bonus cards. So Liz passed that, she can get this one. Simon passes this, he can get, actually these two are together. Liz would have got these two. Simon passes this, he gets this one. And then me, they're both gone already. When I pass it, I get nothing. So that's one of the benefits of passing here first. Uh, so yeah. So the spots you can go are always on the edge of the board. So there's three spots here, which these are like action cards. They'll say like an action on it to do. These are the construction uh, tiles, so you have to actually land on here to build a building. And here's some more wild cards, here's some more action cards. Uh, these two aren't important right now for what I'm explaining, but I'll go over it. There's just other little action spaces. Here's another building, construction zones, blah blah blah. So you can only go on these edges of the board. So the middle is only where you place the buildings. You cannot move to the middle. So what I really like about the game is the turn order mechanics. Whoever's the furthest behind in line always goes first. So right now on my turn, I can go here if I wanted to. I could go here if I wanted to. I can go here if I wanted to for my first turn. For my first turn, I could even say, you know what? I'm going to go all the way around and go to this last spot. Now, if I went there on my first turn, now Simon's the last turn, the last, uh, the furthest behind. So he goes, he'll go here. Now Liz is the last. She'll go. I don't go again. It's not clockwise. We don't each get one turn. It's whoever's last. So now I'm stuck here while Simon's going to go. Then Liz is going to go. Then Simon's going to go. Maybe Liz now wants to go all the way over here. So now Simon, he could just skip along and go to each space that he wants to. Simon can go there. Simon can go there. He keeps going. It's still his turn. He's still last. He goes. He goes. He goes. So, why would someone want to do one of those things over the other? Well, if I said, you know what, I'm going to go all the way over here first, 
I get to guarantee this bonus that I want. I get to guarantee to take one of these bonuses that I want. I get to guarantee to take one of these bonuses that I want. And I get to guarantee to go on whatever, let's say I really wanted to go on whatever space this card says, which I'm not going to get into now. That would be one reason why I would want to do that, which I usually, I've only played a couple games, I don't think that's the most ideal strategy to do at any point in the game, but maybe like going over here as a first jump and skipping these tiles maybe is viable as opposed to going to the end, but why you wouldn't want to do that is because if someone did go here, that was his whole, once you come back to here, like this is the end of a turn, once you go from here to here. 20, 20 time to be over when all three players get back to the starting spot. Then when we all go around again, 2020 is over, and then 2030 again. And then when we all go around again, the game's over after 2030. So, even though I got all those bonuses, that's the only thing that I did get, was the bonuses in this one card. Now Simon and Liz can take a red tile. They can take an ultra plastic. They can do this. They get to take... Whatever it is, like let's say there's 15 spaces here. They get to take 15 things, while I only took a couple bonuses and this one card. So they each have pros and cons. Let's put these guys back. So now, the main thing about this game is being corrupt. That's what these briefcases are. Corruption. Over here, we keep track of our corruption throughout the game. Every time we want to be corrupt uh, business owners or managers, whatever you want to call us, we take some corruption. Then at the end of the game, let's say I'm there, Simon's here because he's super corrupt, and Liz is only here because she's a little bit corrupt. We lose points for how much we're corrupt. So let's say, for instance, since Simon's the most corrupt, maybe he'll lose 10 points from here. So now he goes back to here, he's back at zero. Maybe I only lose one point on that one. Liz doesn't lose any because she's not super corrupt, so she stays over here at 14, and she wins the game. Now, based on that explanation, you would think corruption is bad, but you want to be corrupt in this game. So let's say I go over here. I get to take my one tile from the bag, which actually I haven't actually figured out how to take a choice, so you might have to take like nine, let's say. Take the one, take the one you want and then put the rest... Why isn't it letting me? Oh, I gotta pull shift. Put the rest back in the bag. So I take my one red, I put it on my little construction zone. So now, let's look at one of the boards. I have a red tile. I could build this one. I could build this one. Well, no, obviously not right now, but eventually I could build this one. So with that red now, I'm looking for a gray and a blue. So, I know over here a blue is coming up. Boom. And yes, technically a gray one is coming up too, but you can only go to one space in the zone. So my next turn, I would have to go over here. I can never go just forward one. I have to go in the next zone. So anyway, if you're corrupt, all of the tiles have a corrupt action. I can gain one corruption, so I'll come over here, get myself one corruption. Let's just all go back to zero. I give myself one corruption. And I can go in the bag and take a random one. So, I take my one random one. It's a blue. Which actually is very good for me. So now I have a red and a blue. So I'm only missing the gray. Oh, that's actually bad, because it would have been nicer to have the gray and not the blue. But anyway, now I have two tiles that I really need, even though I'm corrupt. So while Liz maybe only goes here... She only takes the gray. She only takes the gray. Jesus Christ. I can't see her player board. In f oh, no, can I? Yeah. All right, so, oh, shit. This is supposed to be me. So everything is always viewable. So Liz and Simon right now can see the two pieces I've drawn, and I can always see Liz's board, etc., etc. So Liz takes the gray. And then we have to put the rest back in the box. Alright. Liz only took the gray. She doesn't want to be corrupt. So now she only has one tile, and she's going to be very slow now to actually get to a building that she wants, because she's not being corrupt. So if she 
ends up being corrupt, you know, all throughout the game. Let's say, ba 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 ba. She's somehow over here now, after like four or five turns. She has all the things she needs to build this building. One, two, three, four, five. So let's see. Let's pretend Liz has all those colors. She takes five. She puts it here. So right now she has five points because she was super corrupt. Whereas Simon didn't get corrupt. He maybe only got the two pieces he needed without being corrupt. He's only getting two itty bitty points. So not only does Liz now have an advantage of being corrupt, have an advantage of having five points from being corrupt where Simon only has two and it's a three point difference. At the end of each round, if you look over here, Whoever has the tallest building in an area gets one point. And then in 20 to 20, whoever has the tallest in the building in the area gets two points. In the final round, whoever has the tallest building gets three points. So right now, this five is obviously bigger than two. So Liz got the five points from this, plus now she got an extra point in 2020, or 2010 for being the tallest building in this area. So her being corrupt right now just got her four points over Simon. So at the end, even though she was corrupt, maybe her corruption is only going to cost her one point. So she'll go from five to four. So she lost the point, but she gained four. So really, she gained three. So you want to be corrupt. Now. Do -do -do. So I'm not going to go over all the action cards, because by the time we get to a game, there'll be like new ones here. So there'll just be a card that says you can do different things. Now, the construction zones. As you can see, this one is free. Like, there's no... There's only a construction sign here. I go there. But now, let's say Simon really, 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 really wants to build this turn. Because he has... We're in 2020... or in 2030. He has all these pieces. He really wants to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 points. He can't go here, because I'm here. So he would have to go here. He would need to take two corruption to build. So he thinks that being corrupt and going to that corrupt construction company is worth two corruption is worth building his seven point building. Now, this is upside down the wording, so let's just go over here. All of the construction zones says unless constructing in and then there's an area. So this one says downtown. Another one says East, side, East Gardens. So East Gardens is over here. So this one's for East Gardens. Then there's a construction one over here that says, uh, what is it, Harborside, which is this section. Then there's downtown, this section. There's a city center in the middle. So basically, if I go here, I construct for free, but only in East Gardens. So if I build a five in East Gardens, it's free. But if I said, you know what, I, j I have enough to build this 14 building. I'm already right now, I have the highest in East Gardens. I really want to be the highest right now in Harborside. I would have to pay one corruption. Not pay, I would have to gain one corruption to build somewhere else. So I'm choosing to build here for that one corruption because I know that I'm going to have the tallest building and I'm going to get two points because we're in 2020, let's say. So I would be benefiting from taking that corruption. Also, not just for that, if you can see, let's use this one because it's face up. There's dotted lines. So this card right here, this five star restaurant is connected to this building space. So if I were to say, you know what, I want to spend one corruption to build, not in these gardens, I want to build over here because I'm going to take the one corruption. I also, aside from the 14 points that I normally get, I can now get this five-star restaurant. Draw twice. You may gain corruption to draw again. So basically, because I put this here, I can now draw in the bag twice for free. And then if I want to gain corruption, I could draw a third time. So I just gained three tiles by putting this one building here. Um, so then like over here, you know, one of the spaces that a person can land on is lose two corruption. So, like, that's what that is, for example. So there's ways to get rid of corruption as well in the game. Um, so once you fill up your board, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's say I have seven tiles here because I'm saving up to build a super building. 
I can't get an 8th tile unless I increase my capacity by getting a new one, which you can do at any time. There's no space that says, hey, gain capacity. What you have to do is, in round 2010, pay 3 corruption to not pay, gain 3 corruption, and I could take a thing. Or if we were in round 2020, I would have to gain 2 corruption to take a thing. And if we were in the last round, I would have to gain 1 corruption to take a thing. So that's what that is. So you need to manage how much you're actually getting per turn, if you need to get more or not. Um, let's see. So again, ways you could screw people over, which are always fun. Let's put these back for the starting, just for argument's sake. Like if I see on Liz's board, she has a gray, and she's trying to build this gray, blue, and pink one. I'm going to go here. So I'm going to take a guaranteed pink. So now I know Liz can't take the pink. I stopped her from doing that. Or if I know she has all of them already, I can go here. Even if I have nothing to build of my own. I'm only going here solely to either stop Liz from building this turn or from guaranteeing her to spend two corruption for building this turn. Um, Alright, so let's go over the ultra plastic pieces. These green pieces. So, let's just get rid of it. Let's only look at one so we don't get confused here. As we said, if I had a purple and a black, I get two points. If I had a blue, a gray, and a pink, I would get three points for that building. Over here, gray, pink, purple. So if I had a gray, pink, purple, and a green, I would get one, two, three, four. I, sorry, I would get five. Because if you build it perfectly with this wild card, you get an extra point. So like I said, it's a wild card. So if I had a gray, a red, and a purple, and a black, I could use the black as this wild card, but I would only be getting one, two, three, four points. Whereas if I built it perfectly, I would get that extra point for being five. Alter not alternatively, but also... As you can see here, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. If you're the first person to build it, you get plus one, and then you block it off. So now no one else can get plus one. So if I built a purple and a black for the first time ever, I would get one, two, plus one is three. If I was the first person to build this one perfectly with this, I would get one, two, three, four, five for being perfect, and six for being the first one to build that. So you can also use this as a wild card. So if I only have a blue and a gray, I could use this green to be black. So I would get I would get the full one, two, three points. So wild cards can be used to replace another tile. And if a building calls for a wild card, an uh, ultra plastic piece, you can use any tile piece to fill in, or you can do it perfectly for an extra point. So... That's why there's spaces on here that maybe, hey, I really want to get this space so I get the ultra plastic. But if I if Simon goes there, if we're at the start of the game, da -da -da, if Simon goes there and gets it, me and Liz might say, you know what? I don't necessarily need this gray or pink card. I'm going to go over here to make sure I get this wild card. And then Liz is going to go over here. So now she gets this wild, not wild card, sorry, bonus card, this bonus card. So now Simon, who even though he got an Ultra Plastic, which is good, he is not going to get to get any bonuses as he pass. While me and Liz still have a chance eventually, somehow, somewhere, to get another Ultra Plastic piece over here. Or maybe one of the bonuses will end up being Ultra Plastic as well that we could pass on our own in the future. And I think, let's see, that's pretty much the overview. And then, you know, later on in the game, there's ways to get, like, one of the cards might say, here we go, perfect example, metal importer, or get a spire. So if I had this card over here, I can get a spire and place it on my building somehow. There we go, place it on my building. So now I have two more floors. So at the end when we're scoring, if this was over here, if Liz had the seven, I had this five, 
Liz would be getting that point at the end for having the tallest building. But if I put the spire, boom, now we're tied. 5 plus 2 is 7. So there's ways to, once you build the building, to make it bigger. There's ways to earn more points by building things perfectly, by being the first one to build things. So even though, you know, you might say, hey, it's only getting two points for building this. If you're the first one, you might want to waste your chips to build it so you get that one extra point for free instead of saving up for a big one. Um, you know, balancing, making sure you have enough room. Corruption, again, that's pretty much the main thing in the game is spending corruption or gaining corruption to do things. And yeah, that was High Rise.